War! <laughs> I spooked you there, didn't I? But don't you worry, I know that I'm definitely too junior at this company to be making any kind of repeat joke. Chest! A deliriously tactical two-player. Chess-like battler for only the smartest brain thinkers. Where the design hinges on the loveliness of its core components. Watch closely. Oh god. Oh jeez. Oh god. Oh, Quinn's gonna be so mad. Oh, Jesus. War Chest is a two to four player abstract bag building game that utilizes everyone's favorite component, weighted poker chips. You'll be shuffling them around inside a bag, sliding them across a board, clinking them around in your hand, piling them into stacks, and as the final secret pleasure, sorting them into a lovely plastic insert. The reason I bring so much attention to these lovely little nuggets of plastic is that they're the clicky backbone to a game that is all about its simple pleasures. An easy teach that tails into a chunky puzzle that's framed by a readable, tactile presentation. To have this lead fully unearthed, I think that War Chest is an absolutely wonderful box of puzzles. But it's a box that I only might recommend, and we'll talk more about that later. So for now, let's just have a rapid fire rules segment. To win at War Chest, you've got to control six of these zones, and in each round of War Chest, you and your opponent will draw three poker chips from each of your respective bags, taking it in turns choosing what to do with them. Your first option is to whack them down onto the board on one of your controlled spaces to summon that troop into the battlefield like a famous pocket monster. Who's that Pokemon? It's a footman. You can also use a chip to bolster, adding it to an existing stack and thereby strengthening it against future attacks, as well as thinning your bag down a little. Who's that Pokemon? It's two footmen. Your next major option is not to put a chip down onto the board, but to discard it face up and take actions with the chips of that kind that are on the board. Each kind of a chip gives you one action with the corresponding piece, so discarding a knight will let you move with a knight, control with a knight, or whack with a knight. Simple, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite simple. The final thing you can do with these pieces is to discard them face down. This will let you either take the initiative for that round or reinforce your bag with new units, plucking them from the tray and placing them into your discard pile, ready to be cycled back into your bag at a later time to take actions with later on. You'll bounce back and forth, taking these turns in dainty sets of three until someone hits six controlled spaces and wins the game. And that basically concludes the simplest rules explanation for this game that I can muster. But of course, like any abstract worth its salt, the possibilities contained therein will spill across your table like a horrible consequence soup. You see, the elegance of this game's core is wrinkled by the pieces you're playing with in each and every game. Before you start, four cards are dealt out which show you what your bag will consist of. Maybe you get a scout, a royal guard, a cavalry, and an archer. These cards will detail that unit's special power. For example, an archer can shoot an arrow to attack something two spaces away, but can't attack something adjacent to it. These also sometimes come with a tactic, another option for your unit to take. In the case of light cavalry, that's a brutal move-attack combo. First off, there's something really lovely about having to work with a random selection of these diverse units every single game. It means you've got to come up with a kind of off-the-cuff strategy, rapidly forming and digesting something that's going to play to your strengths and skirt around your weaknesses. And in that formation of strategy is another separate conversation about numbers. Look, I know it's really boring, but you've got to have your numbers before you can have your review. Okay? To put it simply, in War Chest, everything being scaled down to tiny levels means it's a deck builder where I feel like I've got a frankly ferocious amount of control. If you were to see me play some Slay the Spire, you'd instantly be able to diagnose my personal problem in literally every deck builder. Everything looks like a good option to me, so my decks get out of control ludicrously quickly, and I end up with an absolute mess. However, in War Chest, the fact that you've got a maximum of like 16 or so entities to keep track of at any given time means that every single decision is impactful almost immediately. 
These cards that you get given have a little number at the top that shows you exactly how many cards of that kind there are in the game. So when you play something to the board, it's immediately readable exactly how that's going to impact the flow of the game and the decisions that you make from there on out. Bolstering, for example, seems like a great idea. Making a unit twice as hard to kill is surely a no-brainer. But that quickly becomes a crazy idea when you realise it means you're decreasing the numbers of those chips in your bag to take actions with, or reducing the number of units of that kind you can actually field onto the board. Not paying attention to these numbers means you can very quickly get yourself into a scalding hot vat of trouble. In one game, my friend played all their chips of one kind to the board before swiftly realising they didn't have any chips to move them around with. But the last way that these ferociously readable numbers make the game exciting is in their drama. You see, there's a piece of the rules puzzle that I kind of skirted around earlier, and that's when you place these tokens, you play them face up to take an action with that kind of unit. But if you want to recruit or pass or claim the initiative, you'll be placing them face down. And this adds another wrinkle into the strategic layer of this game. It means that you're constantly just kind of guessing exactly what your opponent has. And because the numbers are so light and breezy and readable, you can always get a ballpark figure on what they might have in their hand. But that means that every single turn you're taking risk after risk after risk, watching the stack slowly piling up and you want to take the right move, but is it worth the gamble? And soon it's all over. Just like this review, I hope, War Chest is a game that doesn't outstay its welcome. It lasts exactly as long as it needs to. And one of the biggest joys of the game is actually the fact that it's so quick that you can set it up straight away with new chits and new cards and see what possibilities play off against each other in interesting ways. But there's a tiny elephant in the room. And that elephant looks like this. Uh, if you're at all familiar with either of these games, Undaunted North Africa or Undaunted Normandy, you were probably sat here for this entire review thinking, why don't I just buy one of these instead? Or why should I buy War Chest instead? These games have so much in common in their very base fabric. They're even designed by the same clever people. I messed that one up, didn't I? Personally, I think that War Chest is a more concise and approachable game. There's a lovely association between art and action in this box that means that the games just flow effortlessly and it's incredibly simple to teach. And even though it's literally called War Chest, not having quite such a stuffy military theme means its bags more approachable. The package is also generally a little bit nicer, more svelte, more sleek, and it does give you the option to play with four straight out the gate if you so desire. However, if you can get behind the theme in these Undaunted games, they are a cut above of War Chest. The pain of losing your last unit in Normandy and the joys of the bombastic, ridiculous set pieces in North Africa are something that War Chest can only dream of. They are, for my money, near perfect boxes and their campaign structure lends them a longevity that I think War Chest doesn't necessarily have. I also wanted to talk about the game's nobility expansion, but I actually barely got a chance to play around with it in my limited quarantine playtesting of this box. More thoughts on that one will likely arrive on a Shut Up and Sit Down podcast near you in the near future. And that, people of the internet, is the end of this review, and it is the end of Chess Month, a single one-month event where we talked about nothing but two-player games that are like chess, but actually aren't. We'll be back to totally normal programming next week with a review of a game that isn't at all related to Chess Month in any way, sinister laughter and rubbing of hands whilst looking at cam- oh god. And that really is the end of the review. If you've enjoyed this wonderful Shut Up and Sit Down product, then please click one of the videos that will be appearing beside my lovely head. And if not, that's cool, go and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a lovely, probably, weekend. Friday, whenever this video comes out, have a good one after it. Bye!